I'm gonna see if I can do this intro without using my hands. What's happening guys, I'm TechSource and in this video we're gonna be building an ROG themed gaming PC. You know, it's been decades since I've done a black and red build, uh, which was Big Red's original color scheme for those that remember. But since Lee and Lee came out with their O11 Dynamic uh, ROG edition case, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to do a black and red build. For the CPU, we are going with the Ryzen 7 3800X 8 core 16 thread processor simply because this is the only Ryzen 8 core processor I have at the office. Now, if you guys are deciding between the 3700X and the 3800X, make sure to buy the 3700X instead. If you buy the 3800X, you are spending around 10% more for only 3% more performance. The price just doesn't justify spending that extra $30, especially if you plan on overclocking because that margin is gonna be a lot less than 3%. Save that $30 and spend it towards more storage or RGB fans or whatever it is. It's not worth picking up the 3800X. For RAM, we are going with only 16 gigs of the Corsair Dominator Platinums at 3200 megahertz. We can't use all four sticks since the motherboard only has two DIMM slots. And this is what ASUS sent me to use in the build, the ROG Crosshair 8 Impact Mini DTX motherboard. For those of you that aren't familiar with DTX boards, the main difference between a Mini ITX and a Mini DTX is the length. Mini DTX boards have the same width, but they are slightly taller, allowing extra space for an expansion slot. However, on here, we have an audio card instead. One thing I like about this motherboard is the layout. We have both a 24 pin and eight pin EPC connector on the same side, which is gonna look much better aesthetically after plugging in the cables. And we also have a SODIMM expansion card that supports up to two M.2 SSDs with two extra fan headers and a three pin five volt RGB header. I also love the connectivity options in the back. We have a digital out along with a USB type C, wireless AC, and it even has a Q code reader with a clear CMOS button. Don't underestimate its size. This is still an enthusiast level motherboard. And we're gonna use this to push the overclocking as far as we can. Since we are on the X570 chipset, it makes sense to take advantage of Gen 4 speeds. So for storage, we're going with the Fire CUDA 520, which is a one terabyte M.2 NVMe Gen 4 SSD. Now this is a high-end gaming and streaming PC. So obviously we've got to throw in an RTX 2080 Ti. You guys already know how we do it over here. And finally, powering everything is the Corsair AX850 Platinum Certified Fully Modular Power Supply. So originally, I was planning on using what ASUS sent me, the ROG Strix LC360 AIO, but I got a better idea. Since we're gonna be using a mini DTX motherboard inside this massive case, it's gonna look a bit empty. There's gonna be a lot of unused space. And honestly, this case is designed for water cooling. So when I see a lot of people out there building air-cooled systems inside a dynamic O11 case, I can't help but to think that they're not really taking advantage of what the case was designed for. So that is why we're not only throwing in the EK P360 liquid cooling kit, we're also gonna throw in the EK distro plate specifically designed for this case. And since I'm not gonna be using this in the build, I thought, why not give it away to a subscriber? But that's not the only thing I'm giving away. That, along with two of the liquid cooling kits from EK, will be given out to three random subscribers. And if you guys wanna participate, make sure to stick around to the end of the video. But with that said, you guys know the drill. We are gonna shut up, cue the music, and begin the montage.
Let's go. Oh my god. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god. Yeah, this screen is way too big. I'm not used to this size. There's just more mouse movement for me. Oh, get some. This is my spot. Oh my God. No, not a sniper. Where do you go? Oh my god. Oh, it was such a horrible game. Everybody, I feel like everybody really played horribly. Yeah. Okay, so pretty happy with the build overall. Uh, you know, despite using a mini DTX motherboard inside a full ATX case, uh, it doesn't look that empty. Uh, the EK digital plate along with the tubing kind of filled up the empty parts of the case and overall it looks pretty damn awesome. I did have to paint the thumb screws and fittings in black unfortunately because the chrome accents would have stood out in this build. I also found an easy way to paint them. So I basically used a few two inch nails and stuck them inside styrofoam and then I used them to hold up the fittings that way I can spray paint all around it. The EK liquid cooling kit was super easy to install and I'm really happy with the temperatures which I'll go over later in the video but there is one thing that's missing from the kit that I would love EK to include and that is a drain valve. Without it, maintenance is going to be really difficult since there is no available port to drain from. I tried using a regular drain valve but the lowest port on the digital plate was too close to the pump and it would interfere with the handle. So I used a different kind of valve. This one over here doesn't have a handle up top, making it super convenient to fit in tight spaces. And the way it works is by rotating the valve to open or close it. With this, I was able to fit it behind the digital plate and I even used the same valve in the mini red build because once again, the handle from the regular drain valve would interfere with the side panel and I couldn't put that back on. So a lot of you guys already know that this is Lean Lee's new version of their dynamic case. They're calling it the XL ROG certified and it has some really nice improvements over their non-XL version. For starters, it has more connectivity in the front. We got two additional USB 3 ports near the bottom with the addition of a reset switch and two LED buttons that controls the front strip. The bottom button cycles between all the static colors while the top one gives you a bunch of cool effects to choose from. And of course, you got the everyone's favorite RGB rainbow. At one point I was debating on keeping all the lights red, like how it is now, but I don't know, it just feels a bit tacky to me. And personally, I think that uh, all that red lighting drowns out the detail and aesthetics of the build. So that's why I decided to just keep the CPU block, RAM, and the GPU in red lighting and everything else in white to kind of illuminate the build. But I don't know, what do you guys think? Another nice upgrade is the hard drive cages. They are now hot swappable, so you can slide your hard drive or SSDs in and out much easier. Each cage has its very own SATA power and data cable already hooked up. So all you need to do is connect this to your motherboard and power supply and you're good to go. This case is also slightly bigger, allowing you to install an extra 120 millimeter fan in the back and you no longer need to take off the thumb screws to remove the top panel. You can just use the unlocking button instead. One cool thing about the case is the optional GPU sag bracket. I love how they integrated it with the motherboard standoffs. It's nicely tucked away behind the GPU and it's very effective with heavy cards like the Strix RTX 2080 Ti. All right, let's talk overclocking. I think I got pretty lucky with the silicone lottery because 
I was able to push the 3800X to 4.4 gigahertz on all cores on just 1.3 volts. And for the 2080 Ti, I was able to add an extra 130 megahertz on the core clock and 1225 megahertz on the memory. Looking at temperatures, the 3800X idles as low as 36 degrees with some spikes up to 45, uh, while the GPU consistently stayed at 31 degrees. While gaming, the 3800X stayed under 57 degrees Celsius most of the time, while the GPU peaked at 69 degrees <laughs> a couple times. Overall, the temps are low, and I'm really happy with the performance of the PC. And I like to think that the fan configuration in combination with the improved airflow of the case contributed a lot. I decided to max out the fan slots in the case, and I went with three intake fans on the bottom to make sure that the GPU and the rest of the components are getting enough fresh, cool air, while having four fans up top to exhaust the hot air out. I also had so much fun gaming on the ViewSonic Elite, which is one of the first gaming monitors with a 1440p resolution and a 165Hz refresh rate with a one millisecond response time on an IPS display. I will be doing a full review on this, so make sure you guys are subscribed if you don't want to miss out. Overall, I'm really happy with the case design, and uh, this was personally one of the easiest builds I've done recently because this case has so much support for expandability and cable management. So yeah, well done, Lian Lee and Asus. And that pretty much does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, I will be giving away two liquid cooling kits from EK as well as an ASUS LC360 AIO. If you guys want to enter, all you have to do is leave your feedback regarding the build or Lian Lee's new ROG XL certified case in the comment section below, as well as pick one of these to take home. Um, one of these, by the way, is a 240 mil rad and the bottom one is a 360 mil rad. So please pick one that fits your case. Um, I'll announce the winners on the weekend on my Twitter or Instagram account, so follow me there if you guys wanna know who won. Uh, you don't have to leave a like, but it is appreciated if you do. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll leave a link to everything talked about below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.